Tingle friends, I'm Annie and I'd like to welcome you to my home studio in Estes Park, Colorado. It's a cold and snowy day up here in the Colorado Rockies and I just got back from a wonderful walk with my doggy. Um, she's our beloved golden and her name is Belina. I, I took a walk in the park in Rocky Mountain National Park with her and it was snowing and it was magical and so inspiring and that's what I do to get my inspiration for all of my artwork. Now we're ready to warm up, drink some tea, settle in and I'd like to show you my new tangle for this series. It's not my new tangle, it's a new to the series tangle and that is Shattuck. Shattuck is by Zentangle Headquarters, and I think it was first introduced by Rick, Rick Roberts, one of the founders. I'm going to show you how to tangle it onto a sphere. So let's jump in. Here are some of the samples I've worked up to show you of Shattuck. These are all, of course, done on a sphere, and they're just some little variations that you can work on as we go. I'm going to show you probably more something like this or this actually, but just so you can see there's so much you can do with it. You can stripe it. You can just add this accent of a, a triangle that is sort of a eye catching piece. You can make it into sort of petals that are rounded and more organic. I actually even did one that looks like a leaf but it's based on the same layering method as Shattuck uses in its breakout. So let's, let's take a look. I've got a circle out of 140 pound hot press watercolor paper to work on today. It's a small circle. I'm gonna be just using an 01 micron pen, black from Sakura. Of course you can use any color you want. And um, I will be needing a pencil to uh, shade with. I love my Mars Lumograph Stettler F and I always have my Tortillon for blending as well as my kneaded eraser for lifting the shading if it gets um, too much. You can also have handy a plastic eraser like this pen style kind because what I'm going to show you is as you can see here I've already kind of um, put a string in. Now, I did this in pencil because it's kind of hard to get the, d the division right. I mean, I, I certainly didn't do this in a geometric way. I hand drew everything, but once in a while you can um, alter like this and this could be altered a little bit to um, make it a little more even with the others like that. So what you see here going on is I have pretty much done something similar to the droop demo that I showed. It's a tutorial and I'll, I'll put a link to this below. But what we do is make like an off center point. And from that point on, we're going to make these bands kind of really look like a beach ball. And the reason I didn't put the point in the center, which you could do, it might be easier for you to learn on, but um, it just gives this nice perspective that looks like the ball is tilting. So I think it's a lot more fun than just straight on. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink these out. Um, so basically this is how you do, you start with your point and then you go ahead and make your dividing lines. Uh, one thing that you need to know about this particular project is you're going to have to have an even number of lines. So if, this is my first one here. Let's count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This won't work if you have an odd number. Okay, so that's an important thing to note if you're taking notes. So with that done, we're going to start our shattuck pattern, our shattuck. And I'm going to show you how I do it. 
I'm, I'm looking at this as kind of a midrib and I'm going to go and make a line kind of pointy, a little bit arced uh, from that point. What Shattuck does, it has this beautiful directional change. And let me show you that on here. Very simply, if you just have a band, and I use this a lot in border tangles, um, you, you just start making these like rainbows, right? Okay, let's, let's count three. And then you change the direction. One, two, three. And then you're going to change the direction again. One, two, three. And you can do however many uh, lines here as you wish. Uh, I kind of like to keep it even, but sometimes if you get a, a wider area, like you really should go to the very end to create this angle, this corner from which to build the next direction. So if you, if you need four to fill out that area, like here's two, three, let's say, oops, I made this one a little bit thin. So I'm going to go ahead and make another one to fill it out. So I get this angle and that's where we start building the next set. So we're going to use the same concept on our little sphere, but we're going to use another line, basically kind of a mid rib. So here we go. And then the next one would, would jump off from here. One, two, three. One, two, three, and then again. And then again. So you would build it all the way up just like that. And that's what we're going to be doing on our sphere. You can play around with this whole idea by having this mid rib, this line in the middle, be fat like we did on here, right? So I made, I made that line kind of like I made with Droop where I just used the line, the pencil line, and then I inked out the other lines to make it this kind of almost a cage on top of our pattern. So that's really fun. And this one I didn't. I just left a line and it's very beautiful just like this. You really can see that floral bursting pattern coming up uh, that way. Same as this. So we're going to stick with the easy way first and just do it with the, uh, the plain line on our sphere. So now we're going to skip. So here's this one's done and this is going to be the midrib here. So we're going to find that same point we're going to jump off on and go and do the same arc. And I am going ahead and doing all of these first, and then I'm going to go and fill in the line work. It just helps me be less confused. This could be a little challenging otherwise. So there we have the first set. And I'm going to go ahead and make the second set. So we want, we want to go in between, always alternating. So this is the bottom point, and now this is going to be the top. So we start here. So we're doing that same arc in between, and that makes that layering. So here's our midrib. Skip one, here's the midrib, right? So we're good. And as the sphere widens and grows, your, your triangular space as your division is going to be growing as well. So this. So 
so now we want to go in between the last two petals that we've made and we're going to see this as the midrib and we're going to start jumping off here and this is the tricky part you're going to have to imagine where it would go with your with your bow with your arc so i'm going to go up here so you're going to go always alternating between the petals that you just drew the prior row so this one kind of already closes itself off believe me i've made so many mistakes up here so don't give up you could even do this in pencil if you want to get it right if you feel like you're going to have to erase so here we have these two petals right and we're going to make another one here that one already kind of closes itself off so here's big petal here's a big petal and we're going to go to the middle here's a petal here's a petal right so here let me just darken this so you can really see what i'm saying that's a petal and this whoops this is a petal and so we're going to go in between those two petals for our next set of arcs we go out here and then this one is kind of already finished off for us and then there's going to be just one more row probably Yeah, that worked out really well, actually. So now we can start doing our line work, okay? And that just is very simply. I'm gonna start with the top arc here, and we're going to one, two, three. And then I'm gonna to try to do the same on the other side, one, two, three. And don't worry if the lines are not, you know, perfect. It's all gonna work out. So let's do that again. I start on this side. It's important to do the same amount of lines if you want to do striping as we did in this sample because otherwise you're not going to meet up correctly with your with your stripe so otherwise if you're just going to leave it open uh, there's so much going on no one's going to see if you don't have the exact number of lines in every single Pedal. okay so here comes the change of direction right here we've got we're, we're just going to stay with the top arc one two three you can start at the top or at the, once you've gotten your first set drawn you can draw the um pair, the other lines using those as a guide so one two three so i could just use this as a guide one two three i find that i get my spacing best if i start at the top of the arc you know i see this little line that i sort of messed up over here when I was trying to show you and here's a little trick you can just take your jelly roll I like to kind of dab it rather than um, really push hard just to kind of clean that up and no one's going to know as we know however there are no mistakes in Zentangle so that's okay too just to leave it and work around it but this is more like Zentangle inspired art so if you want to get more precise and critical that's okay too you're looking at this more as an art piece so here I would actually add another one on this side just for visual purposes I 
we'll do another one here, even though it doesn't pair up, it doesn't matter. And then this would be a change in direction too. So we're just going to start right here in the middle. Yay, I think I actually did this one right. Please don't get frustrated um, if, you, if you don't get it 100% the first time around. It took me a lot of practice to get this right. So here's our midrib, right? So we're going to do our line direction this way. So here's the midrib. This time, since we don't have the arcs out here, it's easiest to find the center and make a little arc first and then build outwards. And then you just have to pretend that you know where all that is going. Midrib. Let's see, let's make sure this is, let's do this one first. This is easier to see. So here is like one petal in between this two. So we're going to use this arc. So you notice I'm doing like five lines now because we've gotten to this area where the space is really getting wide and we have to fill it in. And so here, this is left with our next center that we'll just start building our rainbows this way. See, already very pretty like that. And of course, um, we are going to now use the same concept in shading that we use all the time is that we want to we show that there's some perspective, some atmosphere between these petals that are on top of each other. So the one on the top wants to push the others back. And we do that just by adding graphite all the way around. And then we would be blending outward. So if you have a little bit left on your blending stump, you can pull it up along here on that midrib and that will add another dimension of shading. It makes it look like it's three dimensional. Let's see, I think you can see it really well here. Do you see how this has also got some shading on it? It really makes that leaf form pop and take on some, some sculpting dimension. So that's how I do that. Next layer, but you see how these are now looking like they're a blossom kind of furling up. And I'm gonna put some in the center and really emphasize that center as going down, kind of concave rather than convex. And by adding some graphite or dragging some of your tortillon along that midrib also helps it look really like it's going up and down. Hills and valleys is what I call that. So much better than then just that flat center, right? And we're going to do this for all of the rest of the petals. Always on that top arc on the outside, going on the outside of the line. Here I've, I've purposely left this one so you can see how flat that looks compared to the neighboring petals that we've already shaded. So let me look at it. I think, I think we got everything. 
Isn't that pretty? Already alone, that's beautiful. And if you want to, then you can go back in and do things like, now where did I put my sample? There's the difference between that one and this one. It's um, both very beautiful. This one has a lot more drama. This is really drawing your eye deep into those little black centers that are helping us see exactly where these petals are. So you can do that and that's also a really great opportunity to clean up some of your lines. One other thing you can do is you can weight your lines as well. You can go back, especially where the petals are separating. Just kind of weight them. Not You don't even have to do all of them. So that kind of shows you, you know, I wouldn't do it on every single one just because then it gets to be very um, monotonous and too planned. Uh, I think it's just beautiful if we wait here and there. If you want, you can also even wait these lines if there's enough room. You can go in there and make those triangular joins. They're kind of like a little join like this. Isn't that pretty? That's very pretty, huh? Kind of liking that. You can also do the same thing on the midrib instead. Pretty, it's almost decorative. This is a little tedious, but you know, this is where you get that really good Zen flow going because you don't have to think. You just have to find the spot where it goes and just keep repeating that same motion. And that's that relaxing part of Zen Tangle. I guess you could do one here in the middle as well. Yeah, let's do that. Right where that midrib comes together right here. I could do a little bit bigger one. Like that. So I think that's it. How fun is that? So we've got two different looks going on with the same size little tangle tiles. And this goes really fast because it's so small. Um, you can really practice your shattuck on this as well as on just straight bands and just different set settings in your string. So there is shattuck. Have tons and tons of fun playing around with it in different shapes with also different shaped petals, leaves, just round or more arced leaf. I hope you enjoy Shattuck as much as I do and give it a try. Please do share your work on my student Facebook page. We just all love to be inspired by what you come up with. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Bow Tangle alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zen Tangle.